and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Understanding Your Parental Leave Options. My name is Niall Richardson, and I'm a member of the Political Action and Engagement team at the PIPS National Office in Ottawa. I'm joined today by Andrea Desjardins, who is also from our team, as well as our subject matter expert for today, Kim, who is one of our very talented and dedicated employment relations officers. Hello. We are also fortunate enough to have our president, Jen Carr, joining us today. Care leave is a very important issue for Jen, so we look forward to hearing from her throughout today's session. Before we begin, we would like to take some time to respectfully acknowledge that our office, located in the settlement now called Ottawa, is on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. Before this land was a city, it was and remains a place for the Algonquin Anishinaabe people whose presence here reaches back over 8,000 years. As settlers, it is our responsibility to educate ourselves on the history of the First Peoples, to learn how to be respectful of their cultures, to acknowledge their pain and our part in it. This journey of understanding is uncomfortable, but that discomfort is part of discovering our past and taking responsibility for how we continue to benefit from it. It is our duty to learn, grow, and do better. I am hopeful that our journey guides us to a respectful and harmonious future. At the beginning of our webinars, we like to provide you with our equity statement, which clearly outlines our expectations from participants. If you could please take a moment to review the statement, the link should be in the chat box now. As noted, the Professional Institute of the Public Service of Canada strives to create a climate that is respectful, safe, and inclusive, where we all feel welcome and valued, and where we are supported to make our contribution and support others to make theirs. We thank you for being a part of this inclusive space today. Now, let's go over some key uh, information about our platform, Zoom. Due to the size of the group, we have muted your computers to ensure we have the best sound quality for everyone participating and for those who will watch it later. Please use the Q&A feature to send us a message if you have any questions or technical difficulties during the webinar. We will have a question period later on in the webinar um, where you will have time at where we will have time to answer your questions live. My colleague, Andrea, will be monitoring the Q&A feature, uh, so she should be able to help you out. And as a note, this session is being recorded and it will be circulated to everyone soon. Throughout today's session, we will be asking you for our feedback on the webinar. These polls are completely anonymous and optional. Uh, your participation will help us make uh, continue to improve our webinar experience and to help deliver better and more relevant content to all PIPS members. So I will launch that poll now. There we go. Oh, mask error on me again. Maybe hopefully Andrea will be able to launch the poll. For some reason the polls don't like me these days. Uh, there are three questions. Oh yes, Andrew was able to do it. Our first question is, to which gender uh, identity do you most identify? The second question is, please share your age. Third question, how many years of service do you have? And the fourth question, do you reside in Quebec or the rest of Canada? This question will really help our subject matter expert focus on the most important uh, or rather appropriate insurance regime. If you don't see uh, that window pop up, it could be because your computer settings are set to block these kind of pop up windows. You are welcome to share your responses in the Q&A feature if you would like to participate, but we should note that any information shared in the Q&A is uh, not necessarily anonymous. So I'll give folks a moment to answer those quick questions. All right. In today's presentation, we will provide you with an overview of parental leave provisions, including terminology, types of leave, how the leave affects your pension and benefits, the reimbursement formula, EI or employment insurance and QPIP benefits. This will be followed by a question and answer period where our subject matter expert will provide us with some advice on parental leave provisions. It's important to note that this presentation is designed to give you a high level overview of how parental leave provisions work for PIPS members of the public service. 
For more in-depth information, you have a few options. You can visit our CareLeave webpage, which will be updated shortly with useful resources, uh, as well as the Government of Canada website or the Government of Quebec website. We will be sharing all the links uh, to those relevant pages during the webinar. You can also review your collective agreement, speak with your steward if you need specific help, they are there to support you, or you can reach out to us after the presentation we would be happy to point you in the right direction. Before we get started today, I'd like to turn it over to Jen to speak to us about why parental leave is such an important issue to her. Jen? Thank you, Niall. First, I wanna welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm so glad you could join us. Being a new parent is hard enough without digging through your collective agreement and scrolling through web uh, government websites for parental leave information. I had to go through this cumbersome process three times, and I can tell you it did not get any easier. There's a lot of paperwork, a lot of online forums, and so little support. That's why I hope today's session will give you a, the baseline information that you need to get started. We have one of our amazing EROs came with us today to walk you through our, your provisions and to answer your questions. Whether you're birthing, non-birthing, or adopting parent, we've got you covered. So let's get started. Over to you, Kim. Hey, thanks very much, Jen. And you'll note that I have my camera off mostly because I'm referring to my second screen and I don't wanna force 500 people to look inside my ear. So thanks for your, your flexibility on that. So I think we're starting off today going through some key terminology. And so what I like to do, you know, when I'm facilitating a workshop or if it, even if I'm attending, I think one of the trickiest things is when you're hit with a bunch of jargon or acronyms and you have no idea what people are talking about. So I think we're gonna start really just with the basics and two things that you've already heard Niall say today and you'll hear all of us talk about are employment insurance and QPIP. So employment insurance is the insurance plan that gives you coverage depending on where you live. It applies to all of Canada with the exception of Quebec. And employment insurance is usually referred to as EI. And so EI benefits actually include both maternity and parental leave. So very relevant to today's topic. In Quebec, they have the Quebec Parental Insurance Plan, which we usually call QPIP. And this applies to Quebec residents only. So like EI, these benefits include both maternity and parental leave, as well as paternity leave and adoption leave. Awesome. We're going to talk about both EI and QPIP today um, as participants are from all over Canada. So if you hear Kim talking about EI, know that QPIP will be coming up next. Great. Thanks for that. So in the last few years, there have been a lot of changes with the terms around parental leave, mostly because our society is slowly becoming more inclusive in terms of recognizing how there are differences in family structures. And there's also been increased participation in the workforce for folks of different genders. So you used to just see maternity leave and parental leave. And luckily, we're moving to use language that includes more people and more different family structures, which is really great. So when we use the language of maternity leave, we're referencing leave without pay for the birthing parent. When we talk about parental leave, that's again, leave without pay for either the birthing or the non-birthing parent. So whoever's names are on the birth certificate or if this is a couple who's married and has a child. Parental leave is also leave for adopting parents under EI. And under QPIP, it's a little bit more complicated. It's called adoption leave. And starting in January of last year, they added welcoming and support benefits related to adoption. And we'll go into this in a little bit more detail later on. Also under QPIP, you have paternity leave, which is leave without pay for the non-birthing parent. And that language is gendered, but it is the case that it applies to whoever else, uh, as, as suggested by non-birthing parent, whoever else is, is part of this family. So it doesn't have to be a man. I have a quick question, Kim. What do you mean when you say leave without pay? It obviously doesn't mean folks aren't paid during this leave. Yes, yeah, <laughs> don't worry about that. Leave without pay is just how it's, it's structured. So it doesn't mean that you're not paid. It's technically a leave without pay, but in these cases, the provisions in your collective agreement really mean that the employer is going to pay or top up the allowance given to you either by EI or QPIP, depending on where you live. 
Okay, so we're going to look at a few more terms. And, you know, I confess, I didn't have any experience with this one myself. And so it's probably best known by people who've started to plan to have a family or already have a family that includes children. And that term is reimbursement formula. So this refers to the amount of time you'll need to work when you return from maternity, parental, or paternity leave in order to avoid having to reimburse your employer. We'll talk a little bit more about this later on in the session, but just to give you a heads up that that's something we'll be dealing with. Uh, benefits are the funds granted by the ACTS as well as by EI and QPIP. So it's the money that you receive while you're on leave. Another term you'll hear a lot is allowance or top up, which refers to the employer, the funds provided to you by your employer that are in addition to your EI or QPIP benefits. And to be eligible for that top up, you have to satisfy three conditions. The first is six months of continuous employment. The second is that you need to be on that leave without pay. And the third is that you need to be receiving benefits from either EI or QPIP. Additional weeks are the weeks where the employer pays for your entire allowance. So during the one week waiting period for EI, I note that there's no waiting period for QPIP. And at the end of your leave, when your leave have been exhausted, so one week under EI and two weeks under QPIP. Awesome. Thanks for those definitions, Kim. I think now we have some terminology down. We can get into the provisions themselves. <laughs> can you tell us about the different types of parental leave provisions that are available? Definitely. So the first one is maternity leave. So if you're the birthing parent, you can take up to 18 weeks of maternity leave. For parental leave, if you're the birthing parent, non-birthing parent, or if you're an adopting parent, there are two options standard and extended. Standard leave is a single period of up to 37 weeks over a 52 week period, so a calendar year. Extended parental leave is a single period of up to 63 weeks into 78 week period. I will mention that if you live in Quebec, QPIP does not have the option for extended parental leave. However, employees are eligible to take the extended parental leave in terms of time as provided for in the collective agreement, but just without any additional allowance. So basically you can take those extra weeks in Quebec, but you will not have coverage from either QPIP or your employer. Under QPIP, adopting parents have access to a number of different types of benefits specific to adoption, and we'll get into those a little bit later on. Thanks so much. Um, is there different coverage depending on how many parents work in the public service? It's a leading question and the answer is yes. <laughs> Parental leave coverage changes depending on whether one or both parents work for the public service and also depend on whether they're under EI or QPIP. So for standard leave under EI, when only one parent works in the public service, coverage is what we talked about in the previous slides. So you'll get those 35 weeks and that comes with a 93% allowance. That time period has to be taken within 52 weeks of the child's birth. There's that additional waiting week, meaning that the provision covers the week you're on EI, but EI doesn't pay you. Your employer pays the full allowance amount. And the additional week at the end when you've used up your parental or maternity leave provisions. And again, the employer covers that full allowance during that time. When there are two parents working for the public service, they can take up to 40 weeks of leave, a maximum of 35 weeks per person with a 93% allowance. Basically, you get an additional five weeks of leave with 93% allowance as a couple, both of whom works for the public service. There's still that waiting week, an additional week, and it has to be taken within 52 weeks of the child's birth. Okay, so that's a lot of information and that's standard leave. For extended leave under EI, when only one parent works in the public service, they get a maximum of 61 weeks with 55.8% allowance. With two parents in the service, they get 69 weeks, a maximum of 61 weeks per person with a 55.8% allowance. Again, they would get additional weeks as a couple. In that case, it would be eight weeks of leave with a 55.8% allowance. And there's still that additional week and waiting week, which has to be taken within 78 weeks of the child's birth. If you do choose extended parental leave, you have the option to choose the standard leave allowance, 
which would mean a higher rate of top up for the first 37 weeks, after which you would have no allowance for the remainder of your leave. Basically, no matter whether you take a standard or extended leave, the amount of allowance you're given is essentially the same. It's just if you choose the extended leave, it's stretched out at a lower percentage rate to last you throughout the leave. I will also note that both parents can be on benefits, uh, sorry, be on these leave in, rece in receipt of these benefits at the same time. So it doesn't have to be back to back. You can both be home together to take care of your new child. Thanks for okay. clarifying that. I'm sorry? Oh, sorry, I was just saying thanks for clarifying that. Oh, good, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, so we're going to then move into QPIP. Under QPIP, things are a little different because they like to keep us on our toes, which is fun. Uh, standard parental allowance is the only option with QPIP. So there's no extended leave available, but there are a number of other benefits, most of which are new as of this January or January of last year. So this is an area of, of labor where there are a lot of shifts. So it's good to stay up to date when you can and, and make sure that you're in touch with us if you have questions because things do move quite a bit in this area. So under QPIP, when only one parent works in the public service and they are the birthing parent, they get up to 32 weeks with a 93% allowance, plus an additional two weeks with a 93% allowance if the full 18 weeks of maternity and 32 weeks of parental leave have been taken. If you're a non-birthing parent, you get up to 32 weeks with a 93% allowance, plus five weeks of paternity leave with a 93% allowance. When two parents work in the public service under QPIP, they get 32 weeks with a 93% allowance shared between birthing and non-birthing parents, plus five weeks of paternity leave with a 93% allowance for the non-birthing parents, as well as two additional weeks at 93%. Just to clarify, although this is referred to as paternity leave, this leave is not actually gendered. It's available to the non-birthing parent listed on the birth certificate. And I hope we see a move towards more inclusive language on that soon. I think we have been moving that way, which is great. Under QPIP, there have been a lot of recent changes. And one of the newest modifications is a four additional benefit weeks at 55% of earnings once those eight shareable parental benefit weeks have been paid to each parent. So if you decide to share your parental leave, you get those four extra weeks and they have to be taken within 78 weeks of the child's birth. For the multiple birth benefit, it's an additional five weeks at 70% allowance per parent. For the single parent benefit, it's an additional five non-shareable weeks at a 70% allowance. And just to clarify, the definition of single parent in this context is if you choose to have a child on your own and there's only your name on the birth certificate. I do want to flag that because there is a limit to a maximum of 57 weeks of top up from the employer, some of these additional weeks might not be covered by your collective agreement. The board put forward a decision to limit leave to a maximum of 57 weeks per collective agreement. If your partner is under a different collective agreement than you, you should both be entitled to the 57 weeks of top up. If you're under the same collective agreement, then it would be a maximum of 57 weeks per couple. Wow, so that's a lot of information, but I just want uh, folks not to worry if you didn't have time to write all of this down. The information is readily available in your collective agreement or on the Government of Canada website. We'll also be providing uh, lots of links and resources. And as I said, we're updating our website with uh, a lot of this information. So you'll be able to go there uh, and sort of like slowly read through everything we're saying today. So uh, don't panic. Uh, the session is also being recorded and we will send that out to you as well. All right. Uh, now that we have an understanding of the different provisions, Kim, can you tell us a little bit about how we access parental leave provisions? Definitely. The good thing here, even though we're giving you a lot of information, is that access, accessing parental leave is actually pretty easy. You do need to keep timelines in mind, so you'll, you'll need to notify your manager at least four weeks before the expected start date of your leave. And then, of course, your manager has to formally approve that request. An employer can't refuse parental leave. If you run into any troubles, you know, certainly flag your stewards and they can reach out to EROs as well but usually this is not a controversial process. 
Uh, so once you've given your manager that notice, you're going to work with your manager and HR to ensure that the pay center receives whatever documentation and information is necessary before your leave begins. So you want to have some things in order when you know that this date is going to be coming up. Pay Center is going to provide you with a package that you'll need to fill out and submit. It's going to give you information about your pension and benefits options while you're on leave. You also want to make sure that you get your ROE, which is your record of employment, because you'll need this before you can apply for either EI or QPIP benefits. And the HR department of your employer or the Pay Center will be able to help you with that. Can you tell us, you were mentioning pensions there, uh, what happens to your pension when you do go on parental leave? Yeah, definitely. So when you're on parental leave, your pension contributions are basically put on hold because technically you're on a leave without pay, or at least it's classified that way. So you're going to be given a few options. You can opt out of paying pension contributions during your leave entirely. Uh, if you choose not to pay back your contributions, you do lose out on that pensionable service. So that's something to make sure you really think through and understand. Second option is to pay a lump sum once you return to work for the total pension contributions you've missed during your leave. And then you have a third option, which is to pay in installments. Once you come back back to work. Did I put a dress in the car? Oh, I think someone's mic is off. Uh, <laughs> Or mic is on in any case. Okay, so the third option is you can pay in installments once you return to work, and those payments would be deducted from your paycheck each pay period until you've covered the total amount of missed pension contributions. So a few things to think through there, but essentially you can either just not contribute to the pension, you can handle it all in a big batch when you get back, or you can set it up to come out in smaller amounts. So there's some flexibility and you've got some options to consider. Uh are there different contribution rates depending on the type of leave you take? Like if you decide to take standard or extended? I think there used to be, but that's not the case anymore. So for both standard and extended leave, an employee under the public service pension plan who's on leave without pay for maternity or parental reasons makes pension contributions equal to what would be paid if the employee was not on leave at the single rate following the day of birth or the day of adoption of the child. So if you decide not to opt out, the pension contributions you owe are equivalent to what you would have paid had you not been on leave. Previously, if you had chosen extended leave, you had to cover both the employee and employer's contributions after 52 weeks. But last summer, PIPs pushed to change that and we were successful. So it's, it's a good change. Awesome. Can you tell us what happens to your benefits when you go on parental leave? Yeah, much like your pension, your health benefit contributions are paused while you're on maternity or parental leave. So similarly, you can opt out of making payments for those benefits, but if you do that, it means you won't have access to the benefits during your leave. For standard leave, you can opt out of the health plan while on maternity or parental leave. If you choose to maintain the coverage, you keep your coverage and pay your share of contributions for the first 52 weeks of leave. The dental coverage is completely employer paid for the first 52 weeks of leave. So for extended leave, after 52 weeks, the employee has to pay both the employee and employer share. An employee extending beyond 52 weeks will pay the full cost of the coverage, but again, you can opt out of the continued coverage if you wish. Thank you. Um, you talked a little bit about that reimbursement formula earlier when you were talking about terminology, but can you tell us how it actually works? Right. So this is refer referring to the amount of time you have to work when you return from leave. So for standard parental leave, you're required to work an equivalent amount of time of the parental allowance received. So essentially, if you take, you know, 40 weeks, you need to come back and work 40 weeks with your employer. For extended parental leave, you're required to work 60% at full-time hours of the parental allowance received. For the reimbursement formula, because of the expansion of the definition of employer, this work may be fulfilled in the original position or a new position with the core public administration, an agency, or another eligible public sector employer. 
So basically, you don't have to stay at your same job in order to fulfill the reimbursement formula requirement, so long as your employer is within the core public administration, an agency, or another eligible public sector employer. So there's a little bit of flexibility. Oh, that's really great to know. Um, we've covered parental leave as far as the employer is concerned. The other half of that equation is either EI or QPIP. For employment insurance, maternity, parental leave benefits, can you tell us like how that all works? <laughs> yeah, so we've got, a, we've got a chart here available with some very simple but helpful graphics. And we really wanted to give you a, a visual sense of how things play out. So this chart is showing how standard leave for the birthing parent might work. No, keeping in mind that there are a lot of other scenarios, but this is just, a, just an example. So in this scenario, the birthing parent stops, wor stops working and accesses leave without pay, maternity leave. Then they apply for EI maternity leave benefits. And you can apply for those benefits as early as 12 weeks before your due date. They would have a one week waiting period where EI does not pay a benefit, but eligible members are going to receive that full allowance from their employer during that waiting week. And then there's 15 weeks of maternity leave followed by 35 weeks of parental leave. And you can start receiving EI parental leave benefits the week your child is born or the week an adopted child is placed with you. And then there's one additional week after all the maternity and parental leaves have been exhausted where the employer again covers the full allowance. For extended leave, everything is more or less the same, except obviously your parental leave period is up to 61 weeks. Good to know. Um, what if you're sharing the EI benefits with your partner? If you're sharing EI benefits, each of you has to choose the same option. So either extended or standard leave. Each parent has to submit their own application. And I will note that if parents don't choose the same option, the choice on the first application received is used to determine the benefit option for both parents. So when sharing, the maximum number of weeks available increases to 40 weeks for standard parental leave and 69 weeks for extended parental leave. One parent can't receive more than 35 weeks of standard or 61 weeks of extended parental benefits. The remaining five weeks of standard or eight weeks of extended parental benefits are available on a use it or lose it basis. So if they're taken, they can only be taken by that other parent. Parents can receive their weeks of benefits at the same time or one after another. It's up to you. Can you tell us how adoption works under EI? Yes, definitely. So for EI, it, I mean, it's a similar concept. You're going to take parental leave, whether you adopt or birth a child. Standard parental leave under EI is 40 weeks per couple, assuming both parents are working in the public service. One parent can take up to 35 weeks with a 93% allowance over that, uh, within that 52 week period from the adoption date once the child is placed. For extended parental leave under EI, it's up to a maximum of 69 weeks per couple, and one parent can take up to 61 weeks with a 55.8% allowance to be taken within a 78-week period from the adoption. So similarly, there's that waiting week for EI and then that additional week at the end. Oh, great. So that's like very similar, if not the same to parental leave. Exactly. Amazing. All right. Uh, all of the following information is available on the Government of Canada website, um, which I can actually say is really quite comprehensive and accessible. Um, I just I had to look through it all uh, recently and uh, it was really great. So the link for that uh, will be in the chat and we'll share it at the end of today's session. Uh, Kim, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, employment insurance application process? Definitely, yeah. So the process is simple enough, but as soon as you stop working, essentially, you should apply for EI. It's really important to be time sensitive about this because if you apply more than four weeks after your last day of work, you may lose benefits. And I know these types of things seem really intimidating and overwhelming, but it's, it's a fairly simple process. So I would always encourage people to get started as early as possible and just kind of knock it off your to-do list, especially if you're about to become parents for the first time. So 
to start, when you're going through the benefit process in terms of application, you want to choose the benefit that you're applying for. So that would be maternity leave or parental leave. For maternity leave, you want to apply as early as 12 weeks before your due date. For parental leave, you choose the week your child is born or placed with you for adoption. So there's a little bit of a difference in timelines, of course. When applying for parental leave, you have to choose between standard or extended parental leave. And once you start receiving parental benefits, you can't change options. If you're sharing parental leave benefits with your partner, you both have to choose the same option. So the first parent to submit their paperwork making a choice sets the benefit length for both. If you apply for parental leave benefits at the same time as maternity leave benefits, you don't need to apply again. I do want to flag it. It's really important to consider that you can't change from standard to extended. So you want to have a good conversation with your partner and whoever is going to be involved in helping you raise that child and who would be a good resource for you to talk to. Because once you decide standard, you can't extend. And once you decide extended, you can't go back to standard. So you really want to think that through just so you have a sense of what might work best for your family. Okay, and when it comes to applying, you wanna be sure that you have all of your required documents handy ahead of time because the online form only saves entered information for 72 hours or three days, and then it deletes what you've entered. The online form takes about an hour to complete, so you wanna have everything all together just so you can get it out in, in one go. For a full list of all the documents you need, you can check out the Government of Canada webpage. Once you've completed that online form, you might need to submit documentation to Service Canada either by mail or in person. So keep an eye out for that and for their communications. Once you receive your application, like with any EI process, you'll be sent a benefit statement with a four digit access code. And this allows you to follow up on your application and check online for any communications and important notices. All this and more is explained on the website. And we really recommend that you take a look at the list of required information ahead of time and have everything ready for when you stop working. If you need help or if you have questions about EI, maternity or parental leave benefits, you can contact Service Canada directly and they've got a few options for contact on their website. As I understand it right now, the average wait time for calls is between 30 and 50 minutes. And the link for their contact information is going to be placed in the chat. All right, so that is employment insurance. Uh, can you tell us how maternity parental leave works under QPIP? Definitely. So we've got another chart just to give you kind of a visual sense. I always appreciate that because I'm a visual learner. So I, I really like having a picture, <laughs> even if it's a picture that just has numbers and letters, it always helps. So hopefully it helps for some of you as well. So if this gives you an idea of how standard leave for a birthing parent works. Noting, just like with EI, there are a lot of other scenarios, but this is one example of how it might play out. QPIP is only available to Quebec residents, and it is a replacement for EI benefits or an alternative to them. As you can see from the chart, it's very similar to EI. So you would apply for maternity leave, which is 18 weeks, followed by parental leave, which is 32 weeks. The last two additional weeks of that one year period are covered by the employer once all of those leaves have been exhausted. QPIP also offers five weeks of paternity leave and four additional weeks of parental leave once eight shareable parental benefit weeks have been paid to each parent. So if you decide to share your parental leave, you get those four extra weeks. For multiple births, there's an additional five week of benefits per parent. For single parents, there's also an additional five weeks of benefits. There's no waiting week as there is with EI, but they don't offer the extended leave option under QPIP. So if QPIP doesn't offer uh, that coverage for the extended parental leave, what does that mean for someone who's chosen to take the extended parental leave? QPIP doesn't offer an extended parental leave, that's right. So the employer essentially doesn't offer an allowance or a top up but employees can take extended parental leave in terms of the extra time, because this is provided for in the collective agreement. It's just without any additional allowance. So basically you can take those extra weeks, but you won't have coverage from QPIP or your employer. That being said, the amount of money you receive during standard and extended leave is more or less the same. It's just a question of whether it's compressed or more spread out over a longer period of time. 
Thanks for that uh, little clarification there. Uh, how does adoption work under QPIP? Well, this changed in January of last year. These benefits became a lot more complicated, which I always hate to say, but that is the situation. So we're gonna go through them and I'll explain as best as I can, just kind of going through the nuts and bolts. But if this is something that might apply for you, I would really recommend going to the QPIP website for more details, because we're not QPIP specialists. But we did wanna be able to provide you with at least an overview of the benefits and how they function. So for adoption under QPIP, you'll have access to 32 weeks of shareable adoption benefits, and both parents have access to those benefits, assuming you're a two-parent family. There's also five weeks of non-shareable adoption benefits available to each parent, and there are an additional four weeks of shareable adoption benefits if each parent takes eight weeks of shareable adoption benefits. So if you do share those 32 weeks of adoption benefits, you'll have access to four more weeks of benefits. In the collective agreement, the current language really only allows for two additional weeks, which is obviously an issue, and we'll look to address that in this upcoming round of bargaining. There are 13 weeks of shareable adoption-related welcome and support benefits. And for multiple adoptions, there's an additional five weeks of non-shareable parental leave benefits per parent. And for single adoptive parents, there are an additional five weeks of non-shareable adoption benefits. So it's pretty complicated. So I really would recommend taking a look at the QPIP website to have a sense of which facts and which specifics are going to apply to your, your family situation. Thank you for that overview. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, here, uh, all of this information uh, is available on the Government of Quebec website. Um, you don't have to write everything down. That's where it comes from. Uh, the link is in the chat and will be shared at the end of today's session. Uh, Kim, can you tell us a bit about the QPIP application process? Yeah, luckily, even though all the information we're giving you is pretty complicated, the process to apply is actually pretty simple. As soon as you stop working, you should apply for QPIP. And then you'll have to create a ClickSecure account in order to apply. You'll be able to monitor your application process using this portal. So to begin, you want to choose the start date for your benefit. Maternity benefits may begin no sooner than 16 weeks prior to your due date. Paternity benefits and parental benefits may begin no sooner than the week of the child's birth. Adoption benefits and welcome and support benefits can start up to five weeks before the adoption date although that's not currently reflected in the collective agreement. Next, you choose your plan, and there are a couple of options. The basic plan allows lower benefits for a longer period, which is essentially like standard parental leave. So for example, the maternity leave would be 18 weeks with a 70% allowance. The special plan offers higher benefits for a shorter period. So it's a shorter amount of time than standard parental leave, but with a higher benefit rate. And in this case, it would be maternity leaks, sorry, maternity leave at 15 weeks with a 75% allowance. Considering the top up that the employer would be paying, there's no advantage to taking the special plan. You can find out specifics on these two options on the website. And just as if you were applying for benefits under EI, under QPIP, you wanna be sure that you have all the required documents handy ahead of time. And for a complete list of everything you'll need, you can take a look at the Government of Quebec website. Each parent is required to complete application form. And usually, uh, as we know for now, generally applications are processed in 10 days after the center receives them and all of the requested supportive documents alongside. All of this and more is explained on the website, which we re suggest reviewing particularly the list of required information, and that way you can have everything ready for when you stop working. If you need help or have questions about QPIP, maternity, or parental leave benefits, you can contact them directly. And like with EI, there are a few options for communication listed on their website, and we will put their contact information into the chat. Thanks so much for that, Kim. Um, now that we've given you an overview of the parental provisions available to you, we'd like to take some time for questions and answers. I can see there's a lot of them in there, so <laughs> we're going to do our best to, 
to scroll through. Um, if you'd like to type uh, any questions in the Q&A box and haven't done so, um, we will begin answering them. So please feel free to uh, type your questions into that feature. It's just located at the bottom of your screen in your Zoom taskbar. Um, I will say we are not EIQPIP ex experts, uh, so we will not be able to answer any really specific questions about those benefits, uh, but we have mentioned that both the Government of Canada and Government of Quebec websites are quite comprehensive. Um, we're providing those links and also uh, contact links uh, if you need to speak to someone about a specific question. If we don't get to your question today, you can visit our CareLead webpage, which uh, we will be updating uh, very soon with a number of resources, including uh, an FAQ and links to all the resources uh, from the presentation today. Um, there's also contact information if you need further assistance. Uh, a link to access the recording uh, will be sent to everyone in about a week or so. Um, just a note, uh, for your questions, if you have very case specific questions, um, they will be need to they need to be answered by a steward and or HR pensions and benefits department. So anything incredibly specific, uh, Kim might not be able to answer. So, uh, but there we will give you um, information for who you can reach out to with those. So I will hand it back over to Kim. I'm happy to help uh, try to scroll through here to Kim. Uh, sometimes it's a lot kind of scrolling through the Q&A feature looking for your next question. Uh, but if you want to uh, read off the first question that you'd like to answer, uh, you can go ahead. I think we have about 10 minutes uh, to dedicate to some question and answers. Right. So I'll, I'll peek through the questions and see what I can answer off the top of my head. Looks like we have 160 171 questions. So yes. bear with me. And you know, you can always refer to the resources that are going to be provided afterwards. And depending on whether you're looking at employment insurance or QPIP benefits, we really would recommend checking out their respective websites as they'll have a lot more detailed information. And you can always contact those folks by phone or by mail as well if you want to speak to someone live. Okay. So peeking through the questions, I've got a question. I don't understand why it's 35 weeks and not 52 when we're covered for a year. I, you know, we've hit you with a lot of numbers today, so it's fair enough that it can be a bit confusing. So the, the piece there is that it depends on who the parent is. So you do have a year. It's just that those, the way that those weeks are categorized is broken up depending on what the type of leave is. So if we go back to uh, one of our slides that we showed that kind of visual sense. If you are a birthing parent, for example, there's one week of a waiting period during which you'd be topped up by your employer if covered. You'd have 15 weeks of maternity leave if you're the birthing parent. And then you'd have the remainder of those 52 weeks for parental leave, save for one week at the end. So you're, you are going to get those 52 weeks. It's just that they're kind of segmented. A little wonky, but you're not losing any time. Okay, then I've got, does working for the city of Ottawa count as public service work or only federal government work? As I understand it, it's just folks working for the core public administration or the different agencies. So if you're working for a different level of government, that's not going to give you benefits as though both of you were working for the federal public service. Okay. taking a look through. So, sorry, just bear with me. I want to try and find questions that are different. So as, as Niall was saying, if you've got really specific questions, we'd encourage you to take them up with your, with your stewards, or you can also refer to the government site. Uh, does public service refer to federal employees? It refers to federal employees in the context of this presentation. It's just to do with PIPS members. For a birthing employee, do you take maternity leave and parental leave separately? And is the allowance the same in both cases? So for you can certainly take both types. You're not required to take the full length of time as far as I understand it. But if you were the birthing parent, yes, you would probably take maternity leave and parental leave. You don't have to reapply. So once you put in your application under EI or under QPIP, you're not going to have to submit a separate application for parental leave. It usually happens 
as the normal course over the paperwork. So you shouldn't have any trouble on that end. Okay. If one parent is indeterminate and the other is a casual employee of the public service, do these benefits still apply? That's a really interesting question. And we've got a lot of great questions in the chat here. So what I would refer you to is the terms and conditions of your contract. So, so long as you're a unionized member and you are party to the collective agreement, those terms would apply probably during the length of your partner's indeterminate status. So you wanna know if, when their end date is. That would also probably kick in relevant pieces to do with that chunk of time where you have to come back and make up the work. So let's see here. That's gonna trigger the, the importance of the reimbursement formula. So if your partner has a contract for five years or you have a contract for five years, then your term, that's probably not going to be an issue. But if your contract date ends during that relevant period of time, either during a leave or before the end of that reimbursement formula time date, you might have some some challenges there. So that's something you definitely want to be live to. And I would really recommend checking out either the EI or the Government of Quebec website, and also probably contacting the pay center so you have some clarity on specifics to do with your date. I see a good question here, Kim. Oh, maybe I just lost it. Oh, there we are. Are there options for extended leave 18 months uh, after extended leave? So uh, after you take the extended leave, once that's over, is there an additional leave without pay that you could take if you wanted, say, another six months on top of the extended 18 months? It's a possibility. It depends on your, the specific terms in your collective agreement, but we do have other types of leave available that are unpaid. That would not have the same automatic rights as paternity, parental, or maternity leave do, so it's not going to be a given that you're going to get that leave. But if you have exhausted either standard or extended leave and you want to have that additional time, I would try and have that planning in advance and contact your manager and let them know you'd like to take additional time. Uh, you can have a personal leave without pay. There are a few options in the collective agreement. That is a good question. Thanks, Niall. Oh, no problem. We're both scrolling through here. Yeah. So. <laughs> really? Okay. So can you explain what is meant by 93% allowance? Yeah, that's a good question. So that just means what percentage of your salary is going to be protected, essentially. So often, it's, it's usually not 100% of a, of a a rate is given to you under any benefits, but your 93% just means it's 93% of what you would have been earning regularly. Okay. For the birthing parent, is there pre-birth leave? So that's an interesting question too. So depending on, for the birthing parent, you can take maternity leave and that doesn't have to start after the child is born. That can start up to, I think we've gone through this, but there's up to 12 weeks before your due date under EI, and I think it's similar for QPIP. So yeah, you can classify that as a pre-birth leave. As long as you have your due date, there are gonna be a number of weeks in advance of that date that you can start your leave. So you'd wanna to refer to either the EI website or the QPIP website, just to be sure that you know exactly how it will apply for you. Okay. Sorry, just looking through for more questions. There are a lot of good ones here. So there's a question about the additional week and the waiting week. So generally for any type of uh, benefits under EI or QPIP, but especially under EI, usually there's a waiting week. So if you, you know, lost your job, for example, and you needed to apply for an insur employment insurance benefits of that type, there's usually a waiting period. So there's a period under which you're not receiving any pay. Uh, under this regime, if you're accessing maternity leave or parental leave under EI, that waiting week means there's a week where you wouldn't get it, but your employer will actually top you up for that week. It's the same on the other end. So there's a waiting week and an additional week. The additional week comes at the end of your EI benefits, and your employer would also top you up during that period. That is a little bit confusing, so I think that's a good question. I've got another slightly confusing one. Oh no. <laughs> Two employees that work in Quebec, but live in Ontario, apply for EI or QPIP. Well, 
I haven't personally dealt with that scenario, so I don't know the answer offhand, but I would think if you work in Quebec, you have to confirm whether QPIP applies to you. If you live in Ontario, my sense would be that it would be Ontario that covers you, but I, I don't know, honestly. It's not yeah, something I've dealt with. I'm, I'm Ontario and I just feel <laughs> here. So someone else tap in. Image Jennifer. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, now it's Jennifer. Can you hear me? We yes, sure can. can. Yeah, so as somebody that, that, like what I was talking about, my my, my mat leaves, right? Um, so I did work in Ontario, but because I lived in Quebec, I applied for QPIP. Perfect. So it's based sense. on where you live. Based, <laughs> based on where you live, yes. That's great. Thanks so Thanks, much, Jen. Jen. I think we have time for one more question. I don't know if there was one that you saw. Uh, I'm just scrolling. So I mean, Niall, if you see one that really ex excites you, <laughs> we can run with it. Uh, let's see here. So here's a question. Do employees have access to anyone at PIPs that can go over the details of the leave options available to them one-on-one? -on -one? What we would recommend doing in your specific scenario is contacting either the government of Canada or the government of Quebec, going through their website to go through the specifics. We are generalists and we can give you kind of bare bones, skeleton information about how these leaves functions as we have today. And we can certainly speak to you about the way things play out in your collective agreements. But in terms of your specifics and the detailed information and the detailed options, you're best served by going right to the source, whether that's EI or whether that's QPIP. We are not specialists in these types of leaves. So those would be your best options. Great. Uh, thanks everyone again for all of your questions. There's so many and I honestly wish we could just sit here and answer them all because they, they're very interesting. Um, but uh, we will go over some resources and uh, give you some places that you can reach out to for additional help. Um, many, many thanks to you, Kim, for being here today uh, to give us such a comprehensive overview of parental leave provisions and for answering uh, questions today as well. Um, thanks everyone. Uh, for your questions. And as I mentioned, uh, I am now switching to the resource page. Um, we have been posting these in the chat. We'll do it one more time. Uh, today, we did give you an overview of the parental leave provisions that are available to you. Uh, some leave provisions can be very technical, as you know, and I'm sure our subject matter expert could easily talk about them for hours. Um, our Care Leave webpage will be updated in the coming weeks with plenty of useful information pertaining to your parental leave provisions and how to access them. Um, the Government of Canada also has great resources available as well as the Government of Quebec, as we mentioned a few times. We have a quick little feedback survey, but before we get to that, I would love it if, uh, Jen, would you like to share a few final thoughts with members today? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, more than a few. So as you can <laughs> see, I changed locations. I'm a parent myself. So we are we are going with the flow. We're at the dentist we're waiting to go in. So first of all, I want to thank Kim for being here today to give us an overview of, you know, the available parental leave provisions. As someone who struggles with information consumption myself, I want to just take a moment to say uh, that this was a ton of information in a short amount of time. So we don't want you to feel overwhelmed and that's why we've created quick reference sheets uh, for participants and for all of those numbers and definitions that you have written down. Um, we've also updated our Care Leave uh, webpage with uh, parental uh, leave facts and resources and we will post a recording of this webinar shortly. Parental leave is so important and recent changes means that you are able to make more leave choices uh, and the best one that works for your family. Just last summer, we fought to have the employer cover the share of the pension contributions during the extended parental leave so that you didn't have to pay the price for choosing to spend the extra time with your children. So care leave is a priority for me as president. And that's why I've, I'm setting up a career, uh, care leave working group. Its goal is to study the potential issues or discriminatory practices affecting members while taking time off to care for their families. We want to make sure that our members are protected and that they can take time they need to care for the loved ones 
and for themselves. So I look forward to updating you on, on this working group's progress and any recommendations. And PIPS is a community and we want to make sure that we are here to support you and your family. And thanks again for joining us today. And I'm gonna hand it back to Niall uh, for our feedback survey. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here today, Jen. We always appreciate hearing from you. Next up is my quick feedback survey. It is only two questions. It will not take very long. Uh, it is already up and running. Um, again, these feedback polls are completely anonymous and optional. Uh, the results will not be shared with participants. Your participation will help us make sure that we can continue to improve your webinar experience and help us deliver better and more relevant content to all PIPS members. Uh, just a couple of questions on a scale of one to five with one being terrible and five being excellent, please rate your overall experience with today's webinar. And the second question, did you find the webinar informative? If you don't see the pop-up, it could be because uh, your, of your computer settings. Uh, they could be blocking these sort of pop-up windows. You are welcome to share your responses in the Q&A if you would like to participate. Um, I should note that the information shared in there is not necessarily anonymous. It sort of depends on how you logged in. So I'll give uh, folks a moment to do this uh, little questionnaire. I'm gonna swap to my last slide where you'll see our email. Um, if you have any outstanding questions about the presentation, uh, you can email us at bettertogetherpips.ca. Um, we are here to point you in the right direction. Again, we will be updating our webpage in the coming weeks with all of this information. And we will let you know once that update is done. There will be a reference sheet, a FAQ, and all the links um, to useful resources for you. So we're really looking to make uh, comprehensive parental leave space up on our PIPS website for you. I thank everyone again for joining us. Um, the link where you will find the recording from today's session will be sent out in the coming weeks. And uh, thank you again. Thanks, Niall. Thanks, everyone.